For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, this has been a great opportunity for us to come back into the United Nations and, and the United Nations uh, um, atmosphere where, uh, of, of, as you know, last year during the pandemic, we, there weren't uh, General Assembly meetings. This time we were able to come uh, with uh, our new Foreign Minister, Felix Plasencia, representing the government of uh, President Maduro. Uh, President Maduro gave a very important speech, uh, taped speech, uh, during uh, the General Assembly where he laid out uh, Venezuela's visions for, for the time. And also, we were able to uh, connect with a lot of the countries that we don't usually, uh, you know, haven't been able to uh, sit with because of these uh, difficulties of the pandemic. But it's very important for Venezuela to strengthen its ties with other countries, in particular countries that are farther away geographically from us, like countries in Asia and Africa. Uh, and in particular, this year, uh, we had a very special meeting with 18 countries uh, sat together to talk about the defense of the United Nations Charter. This is very key because we feel that today the Charter and its principles, its values, the principle of non-intervention in, into internal affairs of, of, of every country, these, these principles are, are being challenged by uh, policies from some of the members that are trying to impose their will on others. So uh, it's a very important uh, moment that uh, 18 countries have taken uh, the opportunity to say that they want to defend those principles, they want to maintain them, they want to uh, make sure that they are not trampled upon, uh, no matter how strong the country you know, is that's trying to uh, vulnerate these rights. It's important that we all get together and we defend those principles because those are the principles that can guarantee the country's sovereignty and that also can guarantee world peace. If we don't, if we don't respect the Charter, then we, we might as well you know, forget about the whole international architecture. It's key that we come out and express our, our defense of this charter. We also came back uh, a week ago uh, from uh, the CELAC meeting in, in Mexico, which is also very important in regional terms. It's a, we, we find that CELAC is the alternative to the Organization of American States because it's an, it's an organization that really is concerned about the issues of Latin American and Caribbean countries and not uh, the imposition from uh, countries that do not have our same vision or our same interests. Uh, we want to strengthen the CELAC architecture. We want to make sure that we can, you know, as we face very crucial uh, problems together in the next uh, foreseeable future, problems like climate change, still problems addressing the pandemic, it is important that we do it together in an organization that has, uh, that where we are treated as equals when we're not, uh, you know, pit against one another, but rather with a clear uh, objective of cooperation between countries. Well, there's a very important process going on because Venezuelan, the Venezuelan government has always been open to the dialogue with the opposition. But there have been parts of the opposition that until now have, have decided not to sit, but rather uh, promote uh, unconstitutional ways uh, into uh, getting into the government, promote violence. So finally, uh, President Maduro has, I, I believe it's an achievement of President Maduro, uh, his uh, consistency in, in maintaining uh, openness to dialogue that has led to this moment where uh, we are now sitting, the Bolivarian government of Venezuela, the only government of Venezuela, with the 
un, uh, unity platform, which is part of that uh, opposition, but it's precisely that part of the opposition that had opted against elections, that had opted for violence. So it's a new moment that we hopefully can uh, all, as a country, uh, you know, uh, make use uh, of it to strengthen our political process, to leave any, uh, any attempts at uh, disruption that is not based on democracy, on politics, and on constitutional order. I, I think, you know, we already have, have had two meetings. There's an ongoing meeting that, uh, right now, and hopefully we'll have some uh, progress. I think it, uh, from the last meetings, it was very important that, that we had a unified position, both government and opposition, with regards to Venezuela's claim uh, to the Essequibo uh, territory, uh, in, in, which is uh, uh, in the border of Guyana. And also we had a, a, an important agreement uh, in establishing uh, a, a mechanism for social, uh, part of the table uh, to deal with social concerns for the Venezuelan people. That is the main concern. And, and we, we also hope that in this uh, dialogue we can address uh, the unilateral coercive uh, measures that are being imposed uh, on Venezuela and that, and that we can lift them and, and make sure that you know, our people are not affected by these measures that have you know, been creating hardships for all of the Venezuelan people, regardless of their political position or regardless of, uh, you know, what, what they, how they see uh, internal politics. What we're looking for for these elections is a renewal again of our, our constitutional uh, mandates for governors and, and uh, governors, uh, mayors, and uh, the assemblies that that, uh, that correspond. I think it's important because, like you said, this this uh, group of the opposition is willing to participate. There's going to be international observers, international presence that that also will be accompanying this, and will once again prove, like every time, that Venezuela's uh, democratic system is is trustworthy and it is uh, it, it reflects uh, what the people want. I think the most important thing, regardless of the outcomes, regardless of who wins, is that you're going to see we're going to see more participation. I think people are going to be happy that their options are being represented in the ballot and not, you know, uh, in outside adventures that, that are, you know, put everybody's lives at risk. Well, we understand that it's, uh, you know, uh, the, the policy against Venezuela has, um, has not changed substantially in, with regards of lifting of the sanctions, although uh, the aggression or the constant uh, impose, imposing of new sanctions has diminished under uh, this administration. We know that uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of these, uh, you know, um, the, the interests of the United States uh, with Venezuela depends on internal politics of the United States as well, uh, internal movements, internal uh, uh, disputes, for example, in states like Florida where, where the Venezuelan policy uh, does have repercussions. I think it's an opportunity and, and you know, if we have anything to say is uh, for the United States government to take this opportunity to return to diplomacy, to return to uh, a relationship where the two countries can speak to one another with mutual respect, rather than uh, having these illegal measures being imposed on the Venezuelan people because they are affecting the great majority of the Venezuelan people in their everyday life. Um, we hope, and, and like President Maduro has said, our hand is open to, you know, for dialogue. We hope that uh, this opportunity is taken, uh, whether it be uh, through uh, dialogues, the dialogue in, in Mexico or elsewhere. What is important is that we avoid this confrontation and we return to diplomacy. The Venezuelan people have not uh, severed ties with the people of the United States. Uh, we may not have formal relations, but the fact that we're here, for example, in, in the South Bronx, uh, shows that the people-to-people -people relationship still exists and is still very strong. And what we want is that that relationship can turn in a re into a respectful relationship between the two governments.
merecerás para 